All right, I think uh, we're good to go. Um, today we're just going to be continuing on with our uh, the, the Pong project in OpenGL. Um, I just wanted to create the objects, um, place them on the screen, and then also um, add in keyboard input so that we can move it. Um, so right now, um, desktop what we have is our main file that has literally all the code in it um, forget where the keys are for the input all right so it's just the arrow keys all right so if I run this right now what we have is um, you can just move it using the arrow keys pretty simple um, so yeah that, that's pretty much what we have right now um, and then today I just wanted to kind of, um, add the two paddles and then the ball. So we'll start off by creating or adding a way to, uh, actually generate the V, the VBO for the ball because it's not so, e it's not as easy as just saying, okay, just give me a square VBO because, uh, there's going to be a lot more vertices and I don't really want to. Um, create a model, uh, model file or anything just because um, that, that would be a little excessive and we'd have to kind of import another library which I don't want to. I, I just want to keep it pretty simple. Um, Alright, so anyway. So this function I'm going to put it under the VAO function so it's just going to be a method to um, generate arrays uh, for circle model. Um, so it's going to be void gen 2d circle array. Um, we are going to pass in um, the unsigned int number of triangles. So this is kind of like your precision. Uh, then float, or you know, let me actually put this at the, at the, uh, the last part. So since we are returning no values, um, uh, we want to kind of have a way to return these um, things and we're going to um, and the, what, the way we're going to do that was, is we're just going to pass in pointers um, more specifically we're going to pass in references to pointers so we're going to say float uh, asterisk then ampersand so reference to a pointer of vertices and then unsigned int uh, pointer reference uh, indices and then unsigned int number of triangles and float radius is equal to 0 0.5 float all right so what does this method signature look like so right now we have vertices and that's a float pointer and the pointer you can think of as an array um, however when I when I write this line I'm going to say vertices is equal to new float of size number of triangles plus one times two. So what does this mean? Um, well, we're creating a new float array of this size. Um, however, if we were to pass in just a pointer, that wouldn't do anything for us because the pointer would then just point to something new. But the thing is we're passing in a copy of the pointer. So the, the, the vertex pointer that we pass into here um, gets changed, but the vertex pointer in the method that calls us in the main method would not get changed. So we want to pass in a reference to the pointer. So we want to say um, the pointer at that memory in the main method will now point to something new, but it's going to be the same uh, pointer, though. It's going to be the same pointer object. It's just pointing to something different. Um, all right. So how do I come up with the size? Well, um, we're going to have. Uh, the vertices it's gonna it's gonna be a filled circle um, so the it's uh, here let me actually just draw this out I need to get my drawing tablet out one sec I did, forgot to set this up Almost there. Right, 
now we should be all good. Okay. So let me just create a new page and I'm going to say, uh, um, or let me actually do that here. Um, what do I want to say? Um, I'm going to say, uh, Pong circle. Okay. No. Yeah. Circle. Okay. So, um, in uh, graphics, circle is not going to look like that. It's going to look like this. Um, but how do we generate this? Well, since everything is drawn through triangles, you're just going to start slicing the circle up like a pie. So you're going to draw this section, this section, and you're going to go all the way around. And based on um, how many triangles you, you have, you'll have a different amount of precision. So more triangles equates to more precision because you'll have essentially less straight lines. Um, or, sorry, you'll have less section or shorter straight lines, rather. Because this will be straight, that will be straight, that's also straight, but if you have, if you make it more triangles, the, the sections that are going to be straight are going to be smaller, and it's going to look more and more like a triangle. Um, so let's say we pass in 20 triangles. Um, what we're going to need to store each one of these vertices, and that's going to be an X, Y, right? But then we also need to store the origin, so 0, 0. So that's why we say number of triangles plus 1 for the origin and then times 2 because it's because uh, X and Y. We're not passing back 2D vectors. We're passing back just an array of floats. So that's kind of that. I'll get into what each number will actually be in a second. Or, um, now... Let's just keep going. Um, all right. Uh, so we're first going to say vertices at zero is equal to zero point zero float, and vertices at one is equal to zero point zero float. So once again, this is just the origin. Um, now for the indices, it's going to be something different. So indices is equal to new unsigned into array of size number of triangles times three. It's pretty simple. Each triangle is 30 or has a, where do my, where did my cursor go? Uh, where's my cursor? Where uh, this is, God damn it. Um, I see my cursor at the bottom, but it's not moving. What the fuck? Oh, it's because I like pinned it, yeah. Okay. It was just me, just, I put the pen on the floor with the tablet and it was just, like rolling over it. Okay, we're all good. Um, all right, so for indices, you have number of triangles and each triangle is three uh, vertices. So that's how many un uh, unsigned integers you will have. All right, so now we're gonna have uh, a couple of constants here. We're gonna say float pi is equal to four times a tan f, 1.0 float. Um, this is just a trick that you can use to find the value of pi. Um, it's just the arc tangent of one. I'll also diagram this out. More of a mathematical explanation. So in a unit circle, This is the origin, or, or you know what? Let me let me add in a uh, coordinate plane, and then I'll put the circle in because I can't draw. One second. All right, so this is our coordinate plane. Um, and then a circle in here. That's too big, but you know I can make it a little smaller. All right, no, it's still too big. There we go. Okay. So unit circle just means that uh, 
Radius is one, even though it's not even. All right, that should be a little more even. There we go. All right, so one, one, negative one, and negative one. Um, so anyway, the arc tangent of one, so tangent is equal to y over x, or tangent of theta. Uh, so if arc tangent is equal to one, y is equal to x. So that's this case here where theta is equal to pi over four. Um, so if we, and so tan of pi over four in radians is equal to one. Uh, if we wanna get the, the pi over four, we just take the arc tangent so arc tangent, um, so we just get pi over four is equal to the arc tangent of one, and then pi is equal to four times the arc tangent of one. So just some simple algebra tr and trigonometry there. Um, just to figure that out. So that's a, that's a little trick that you can use um, every so often. Um, okay, so that's pi, uh, now we want the float number of triangles F uh, is equal to just the float conversion of number of triangles, just so we don't have to um, convert it every time we need it, because we're gonna need it in every iteration. And then float theta for a um, for a uh, placeholder. Um, all right, so now we're gonna get into the loop. So how are we gonna determine uh, which eat what what each vertex will be. So I'm actually going to display it right now, how we're gonna do it. So um, we'll start here at theta is equal to zero and we'll increment this. So um, the one revolution of the circle is two pi radians. So essentially we'll have two pi over number of triangles. That's kind of the step for the, uh, um, for the angle. So we'll, it would, next triangle will be here here, here, and so on. And all these values have um, trigonometry values. So let's say we took this one. So over here, the theta is, oops. Oh no, what I do? So this is the ray that points to the, oh God damn it. So that's the ray from the origin to the, or, I mean, it isn't, but. God, I can't draw. There we go, okay. So the angle goes from the x-axis and goes counterclockwise to here. So that's theta. Um, and the theta is is how many ever steps, or that's just the angle that we determine and we step it up every time. Um, so each um, triangle has a value, x and y, um, where just like that, just like that. So this x value here, x is equal to cosine, um, or yeah, the radius times cosine of uh, theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. Just like that. So we're going to use those trigonometric relationships to actually uh, um, figure out what the vertices should be. Um, all right, so we're gonna say four unsigned int i is equal to zero, i is less than number of triangles, i plus plus. Um, so we're gonna say the uh, radius is whatever. Um, theta, so the angle is equal to i divided by number of triangles times two times so once again, you see that um, each step is two pi over number of triangles. So if we wanna go i steps, we're gonna say i times two pi over number of triangles. So I can actually rewrite this as i times two times pi divided by number of triangles. That's a little more clear as to what it means. Um, then x is equal to r cosine of theta. Uh, which is going to be equal to the vertices. So we're gonna put this at the vertices location of i plus one times two. Um, and then y is equal to r sine theta, which is equal to the vertices at i plus 
1 times 2 and then that plus 1. Um, I just found these indices with a little bit of thought and of how it would actually work. Alright, so uh, step up theta first. Um, so theta plus equals um, 2 times pi divided by number of triangles. And you just start theta at 0, 0.0 float. Or actually, that'll be at the end. Or, um, yeah, so th this, this step up should actually be at the end. I'm sorry. So in b before the step up, we're going to set the vertices. So vertices at i plus, in parentheses, i plus 1, close parentheses, times 2 um, is equal to radius times cos f um, of theta vertices at open parentheses i plus 1 close parentheses times 2 plus 1 is equal to radius times sine f of theta. Um, now we want to set the indices. So for each index, um, if so if let's say our goal was to have um, our vertices or So vertices would have an x column and y column essentially, but in memory it would be just x, y, x, y. So we're going to say 0, 0.0, 0, 0.0, uh, then x1, then y1, then x2, then y2. Now all these indices, we're going to say index, so 0, 1, so we're going to get 0, 1, and 2 for the first triangle, then 0, 2, 3 for the second triangle, then 3, 4, because remember, these vertices are being shared. So this vertex here is shared between the first triangle and the second triangle. Um, so we're going to want to say, for the set indices, we're going to say indices at i times 3 plus 0 uh, is equal to 0. I'm just putting the plus 0 there for readability. Uh, then indices at i times or i times three plus one is equal to i plus one, and indices at i times three plus two is equal to i plus two, just like that. Um, and then finally, uh, so then we step up theta, and then you end the loop. Now outside of the loop, uh, we want to do one last thing, um, which is tell the index array to wrap around at the end. So we just say set last index to wrap around to beginning. So uh, indices at number of triangles times or number of triangles minus one times three plus two uh, is equal to one. So this index here, so number of triangles minus one is the last iteration, so the last value of i, then times three plus two is just that last index there. Um, and then we just set it to 1 because we want it to go back to the uh, first index. So x1, y1 would be here. I can actually just draw this out. Keep having to whip out my tablet again and again, again, and again. So this is x1, y1, then x2, y2, and then if we go all the way around, we get to x, n, um, X n, uh, yeah, x n and then y n. Um, if we were to add one to the index, it wouldn't find it. So we want to go back to one and one there for the uh, vert vertex um, index. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's generating a circle um, buffer array or a circle VBO. Um, now we can actually use that. So let's try displaying a circle here. Um, so I'll go into the main loop um, and I'll comment out the vertex data and the index data. And I'll say uh, float vertices pointer or float pointer vertices 
and float pointer indices. And then I'm going to say gen 2D circle array. We're going to pass in the vertices, indices, number of triangles, so it's like 20, and then the radius will just keep at 0 0.5 for now. Or, um, uh, do we want to do 0 0.5 or um, let's say 20 or 50 actually, because remember this is in pixels. Oh, make sure that it's unsigned int pointer indices. Um, okay, so that should be good. And you don't know, no, keep or then you can change it, play around with the sizes, because remember we have a size array that scales it again. So you know, I'll just keep this to 1.0 float. Okay, so now let's run this, and I'm gonna see how this works. I don't know if it will. Um, okay, okay, so I know what happens. So you see that we have part of the triangle. Now, why, why is that? Well, remember when we tell it to draw something, we're only we only tell it to draw the first six indices three times two here. So what we need to do is create a variable called unsigned int number of triangles and I'll set it equal to 20 and you pass the number of triangles to the method and also when we tell it to draw in the main loop we're going to say three times number of triangles um, and then yeah so now let's run it you see we still get the what, what, what's um Oh, because, wait, did I fuck this up? Oh, yeah, because yeah, I didn't set the VBO. So um, the VBO, when we set the position VBO, we need to say the size or the number of elements is two times, then in parentheses, number of triangles plus one. All right, yeah, so the GPU just wasn't getting the rest of the data. So now if we run it, um, still not right. Okay, uh, did I fuck, did I screw something else up? Oh, the freaking index, the EBO, so, okay. So since we're changing the number of elements, we need to change the number of elements that we generate in the vertex array, the index array. Then we also need to update the VBO size, the EBO size, so the EBO number of elements should be three times number of triangles. And then when we draw, it should also be three times number of triangles, so the number of indices to draw. And there we go, okay, so now. Now that is all good. So you can count how many straight edges there are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Perfect. So you see it's not very clean, but let's try adding more triangles to it. So let's say number of triangles is equal to 50, and you'll see the precision jump up. You see that looks a it's still a little straight, but you can't really distinguish edges anymore just because of how many there are. There are now 25 on each half. So it's, it's harder to determine. Now let's, let's make it like 100. Ooh, that looks clean. Yeah, that looks clean. I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. So when we have something small like a, a, a pong ball, um, the number of triangles won't matter really much because because you won't be able to distinguish edges because of just because of how small it is. Now let's try making it uh, one triangle and see how that looks. It should just be a line or nothing, and that's right. It should be nothing. Um, let's make it two triangles. And this should be a line, I believe. Uh, you can't even see it. Three. That might just be because it's hard to see the... Yeah, there you go. Okay, so yeah, now with three, you just get a triangle. And you know, this could be cool, actually. Because you could use this to... Because that, that's an equilateral triangle, really. If you think about it, that is an equilateral triangle. Um, yeah. It is. And if you rotate this, you can do whatever you want with it. Okay. So that's all good there. Um, so we'll keep the number of triangles to 20. Um, and we'll say the radius is 0 0.5 just because that will um, say the diameter is 1. So we want to have the ball, let's say, be 20 by 20 or uh, 10 by 10 pixels. So I'll set the size to 10 and 10. 
Um, that's not right. But you see, I can still move it. Um, 10. Um, this is, when I say one, I don't, um, that doesn't look right. I don't know. Float sizes. Um, oh yeah, I'm an idiot. <sighs> God damn it. When I set in the freaking site what the data I set in the size VB I always put it in pass in offsets so when we say generate the size VBO you have to pass in sizes okay there we go that makes more sense god damn it okay there you go so now look at that it's a pong ball and you can't even see it looks like a freaking diamond so it won't matter how many triangles we put in there um, so typically I probably have a little larger so I'll say 15 and 15 right And that just looks like dog shit. Um, you know, let's say number of triangles is equal to 50. See, I, I probably was mistaken. You probably can see it. Um, or that might just be the GPU not wanting to do it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. Okay. So now that we have that, we have our circle um, buffer. Let's uh, try, let's let's make, let's name it as, as a circle. So we'll say um, ball vertices, ball indices, and number of triangles do the same. So we need to update those names there, ball vertices, um, ball indices. The offsets will set to, uh, um, I want to say width or SCR width divided by 2.0 float and SCR height divided by 2.0 float. Uh, sizes will keep us 15 and 15. Then for the VAO, let's just call it a ball VAO. like that so then update all the names of the v vao so when we set all the vbo's just change that um so there's a bunch of uh places to change the vao name and then we also need to change the vertex vertices name in when we set the data. So all the existing data that we have there, the offsets, the sizes, the positions, and the indices should all be changed to ball in front of that because we're gonna have a different uh, VAO and VBO for the, uh, um, for the frickin' uh, paddles. Alright, ball indices, um, and then there's something else. Okay, yeah, here we go. Alright, just like that. Alright, so let's run this. I can still move it around, whatever, pretty cool. So yeah, I'm just having a fucking blast doing this. I actually don't know why it's not like uh, doing or making it like a circle. Because if you look at that, that's like an all. I doubt you guys can even see this, to be honest. No, it's it's kind of visible, but. If you if you look in closely, it's it's um it's a little ball like it's a, sorry it's a little octagon, and we want a ball so I don't know okay we'll fi we'll figure it out. 
All right, so now that we have our so ball VAO slash VBOs or BOs, um, now we're going to set the paddle V uh, AOs and VBOs. So a section for each. Um, if you were actually wondering, uh, we are listening to the Hollow Knight official soundtrack. I should just check something real quick. It is um, actually very quality, if I do say so. Um, it's intense, but it gets calm. It's uh, it's kind of short though, so it's already been thirty minutes. Holy shit! I need to, I need to actually stop being a, like, holy crap! All right, so the ball VAOs and uh, VBOs. Now let's do the uh, paddle. VAOs and VBOs. Okay, so uh, you can uncomment the vert the vertex arrays uh, and index arrays for the panels. So panel vertices and panel indices. So let me just get my reference up to make sure I'm not doing this incorrectly. Okay, so we're going to start under where we create the vertex, vertices and indices. Um, and so now we're going to have an offsets and size array. So offsets array. So float, paddle, offsets. And now we're going to have two of them, remember. So it's equal to, um, for x, let's say... Um, uh, uh, 20 point oh float and then the height will be screen height divided by 2 point oh float and then the second one will be SCR width minus 20 point oh float and then SCR height divided by 2 point oh float just like that then the size array You know, let's actually put this uh, 35 off of the wall. Um, yeah, okay. So for the sizes, we're going to say float paddle sizes array is equal to, um, now once again, we have to have um, you know what I might try and do a trick here since it's, since the size is going to be the same why don't we just create it once and tell it not to instance think about it because the instancing will iterate to the next set. However, if we don't tell it to iterate to the next set, it'll just stay the same. So yeah, panel sizes, we can just say, uh, so width we'll say is uh, 15.0 float and height is 50.0 float, just like that. Um, all right, so now we have to set the or generate the buffers and VAOs and all that good stuff. So, for the VAO, God, I if you guys remember last time, I was my jaw was hurting from saying this so much. All right, so we're gonna say paddle VAO. Um, gen VAO and then I'm passing a reference to panel VAO. Um, then we're going to set the position VBO. So gen buffer object. Um, template is float. Uh, say VAO.pose VBO. GL array buffer. Then we're going to say two 
Uh, number of elements is two times four. Uh, then the data itself will be panel vertices and usage will be GL static draw. Then for the attribute pointer, we're going to say set at pointer. Template argument is float. Um, VAO.pose VBO. Zero for the index. Two for the size. GL float. The uh, type stride is two and offset is zero. Uh, the size VBO. Uh, gen buffer object. Float is template. Uh, or sorry, I, I should make this paddle VAO. I mistyped that. Um, so we're going to say panel VAO dot, um, this is offset or size? What comes first? Offset. Yeah, right, so dot offset VBO, um, GL array buffer. Uh, the offset is going to be number of elements is two times two because we have uh, two elements and there's two components per element. Uh, then the data itself will be paddle offsets. Or, um, what do we want to say? You know what? Yeah, let's just initialize it with that. So paddle offsets. Um, and then GL dynamic draw. And then the attribute pointer. Um, so set at pointer. Template argument is float. Um, we're going to say VAO dot, just one second, I'm just going to make sure this music isn't too loud because it's kind of blaring in my ears, it looks, it seems to be okay. Although I do, it's a nice soundtrack, won't lie. Um, okay, back into it, alright. So set at pointer, template argument is flow, we're going to say panel VAO dot offset VBO. Um, Index is one this time. Uh, size is two. Type is GL float. Um, offset or stride is two. Offset is zero. And divisor is one because the offsets will re. God, I, I hope you guys hear the fire truck. And then I will do the same thing for the offset. Wait, this was the offset VBO. We're doing the size VBO next. Um. Alright, so same thing, gen buffer object, float, paddle, VAO, dot, size, VBO, GL array buffer, um, number of elements is just two times one, uh, paddle sizes, and we can say GL static draw because it's not going to change. Then set at pointer, float, paddle, VAO, dot, offset, VAO dot size VBO. Uh, index is two, size is two. Uh, GL float for type, stride is two, offset is zero, divisor we are not going to set because remember we don't, um, here I'll just say don't set divisor because um, it doesn't change between instances. Alright, and then um, next, the EBO. So EBO, uh, gen buffer object, uh, on GLU into the template argument, uh, panel VAO dot EBO, GL element array buffer for the type, number of elements is um, 2 times 4, I believe. Uh, data is going to be paddle indices, and then GL static draw, once again. Right, and then um, we can just unbind stuff. So um, I'll just copy the code here. So unbind buffer, GL array buffer, um, and then unbind the VAO using unbind VAO. Um, okay. I, will, I hope that's it. Now let's try drawing it. Um, so we can use the same shader for both because it's just uh, white, the color won't change, and also uh, 
um, we're going to be interpreting all the position sizes offsets uh, the same for both objects um, so we can just say draw paddle VAO mode is GL triangles um, count is going to be how many indices that's um, three times two right yeah three times two um, and then we're going to say the type is GL unsigned int uh, then indices will be zero and the instance count will be two because we have two instances and then after the at the end we can say just say clean up um, uh, paddle VAO okay so let's try running this <sighs> they're not showing up okay What could be the problem? All right, let's see. Let's just make sure all the data is correct. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, negative 0. Yeah, yeah that, that's all good. Um, 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0, good. Paddle offsets. It looks right. Panel sizes, 1550. You know, let me just try doing this for both. So don't worry about it right now, but don't, don't change your code yet. Uh, I'm just gonna run this, see if it works, makes a difference. Oh, it does, okay. All right, so that's exactly what we want actually, but I don't know why. Um, why did it not do that? Why did it? Oh. Um, two? Wait, no, 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 that's wrong. All right, so that looks fine. All right. But I don't know why I need to set the divisor. Oh, I know why. Because um, it's it's it, it'll look for the next one in the uh, sequence. It'll look for the next element in the next element in the sequence for each vertex, and it didn't find it, so it just or it probably found some other garbage data. So we do need to set the divisor, but I, I can just set it to two um, so that it changes every two elements, but because or two instances, but because we only have two instances, it will only go through that one and won't need any more. Okay. I can actually make it taller and a little thinner. All right, yeah, that looks a little more like Pong, I'd say. All right, looks good. Um, so now let's add some uh, user control. Wait, do I want to do that yet? Um, what do I have on the description for this video? VVO vertex generation keyboard input. Okay. I guess I just didn't have anything for the. Uh I just reset the thumbnail. I hope that didn't fuck anything up. Okay. Um. All right. So yeah, I guess we can add input. Yeah, I guess we can. All right. So, in process input, we'll now pass in the 
Or wait, actually, we need to update the uh, data for the um, in the main loop. We need to update the data for the panel uh, VB or panel offsets as well. So right above where we say update the the ball offsets, just say update data. Template argument is float um, paddle vao dot offset vbo um, zero for the offset number of elements is two times two um, and data is paddle offsets. All right. Uh, now when process input will pass in ball or paddle offsets, so we can control the panels this time. Um, all right. So go to that. To go to the process input method. Um, so panel offsets. Um, so let's do uh, perhaps um, up and down arrow keys. Control the right. Um, the uh, the right uh, panel and the W and S control the left panel. So let's actually create a global variable called speed. So graphics parameters, I'm going to say uh, const unsert float um, paddle speed, and we'll say how many pixels per frame. Let's keep it at 5.0 for now. Now back in uh, process input, we'll say uh, if glfw get key. Uh, GLFW or window and GLFW um, key. Let's start with the left panel, so W. Let me see actually if this is right. What if I have. All right, see cool. Um, all right, so if W is up, or we'll say uh, offsets or paddle offsets at one plus equals, and then we also need to pass in a DT as well. So double DT gets passed into process input as well. So um, dt times the paddle speed, which is just paddle speed. We'll actually have to increase the paddle speed because dt is going to be a decimal. Um, so that's that. Then if glfw get key window glfw key s is equal to glfw press paddle offsets at one minus equals uh, dt times panel speed. Uh, then if glfw get key window and glfw key up is equal to glfw press paddle offsets at three this time because it's the second panel plus equals uh, dt times panel speed then if glfw get key window glfw key down is equal to glfw press panel offsets at four minus equals dt times panel speed so let me actually increase the speed um, to let's say like 50 and we'll see how it works oh i didn't pass in all right so i need to pass in dt to the Input method in the main loop. So we forgot to do that. Run this. All right. So, oh, okay. So I'm pressing up arrow, down arrow. Pressing the W S. Sorry, I just guess I just messed up with the key. Um, GLFW key down. Oh, panel offsets at four, that's why, okay. 
So panel offsets at three, and I should increase the paddle speed again. Uh, let's say to 75.0 float. Looks good. Um, so I actually want to uh, create some boundaries now. Um, so I'm, by the way, I'm just I'm just with the, this after uh, the circle generation stuff. I, I'm completely winging this, so uh, forgive me if I fuck anything up. Um, all right, so main method. We'll say <sighs> panel offsets. You know, let me create some variables at the top. So const float paddle height. So let's say half paddle or paddle height. And what do we set it to? A hundred. Um, yeah, a hundred. So one hundred point oh float, const float, and then uh, half paddle height because we'll want that because that's the distance from the center to the top is equal to paddle height divided by 2.0 float then const float ball radius is equal to 15 point what do we say 10.0 float that's right uh, then we want the width for the paddle as well so const float paddle width is equal to Keep forgetting what I wrote as the numbers. So the ball, the, oh, the ball was 15 by 15. Or, you know, let's make it 16 by 16 so the radius can be an even number or a whole number. And then we said 10 by 100. Okay. So paddle width is equal to 10.0 float and const float um, pa uh, half paddle width is equal to paddle width width divided by 2.0 float um, and the ball radius was 16 or point oh float or you know let's say ball diameter is equal to 16 point oh float and const float ball radius is equal to uh, ball diameter divided by 2.0 float okay just like that So now I'm just going to update the values in the uh, in the v in the main method so that they use those variable names. Um, all right, so paddle sizes, so paddle width. I'm just putting these in variables so that when we do some of the physics of collisions, some of the stuff isn't just numbers that we actually know what it is. Oh, so there, then. Alright. Oh, this is. This part of the soundtrack reminds me of, um. You know, the, Sher the Sherlock show, the BBC show? Yeah, this, this reminds me of that. Good music. Um, okay. Um. So. Now I'm going to process input. We need to add some sort of boundary for the uh, um, for the paddles because they obviously can't go off the screen right now. They can, but we don't want them to. Um, so we have to create some sort of boundary, right? So we'll say uh, in the if uh, W is pressed, um, if paddle offsets at one is greater than or equal to uh, SCR height divided by or minus half paddle height or is less than then we'll increment it so 
think about it like this. If the paddle is if the paddle is uh, at some position, um, you know, I'm actually just draw it out. Okay. All right. So let's say we have our screen. I I cannot draw. All right. And so let's say the height is six. And the width is eight hundred. And our paddle has some value y. That is actually stored in the offsets array. Um, we don't really care about the x for now. Um, so if this y value, and remember that we have a half paddle width or half paddle height. Variable that we created. Um, so if this y value, so if 600 minus y is um, greater than uh, half paddle height, then do it, then actually move the paddle up by some value. So if we rearrange this for y, we get 600 minus half paddle height, forgive my handwriting, is uh, greater than y, or y is less than that value. So if y is less than that value, we have space to actually increment um, the y value. So, and we'll, imp we'll implement a similar logic for the other four, or the other three. So, if paddle offsets at one, um, so that's the left paddle, um, left paddle Y coordinate. Um, so, boundary conditions. So, uh, um, left paddle, Um, now for the bottom, or actually let's do uh, the right paddle up. So if we press the up arrow, we're going to do something similar. So if paddle offsets at three is less than screen height minus half paddle height, increment it. Now we are going to do something similar for the other side. This time it's going to be zero. So if paddle offsets at one is greater than half paddle height, let me decrement it. So similar logic, except this time zero is the lower boundary. So if I were to put this in numbers, so let's look at the right paddle now. So it's here. So um, remember we have the half paddle height, just like that. So if um, zero plus y is greater than half height. So then y just has to be greater than half. Yeah. So if, if the y value is less than half the height then it can't go any f and go any uh, lower and we can also create some uh, um, offsets at the bottom we probably should to be honest but you know for now I'll just keep it simple you, you can go to the bottom whatever you want um, or you know what it does Ooh. you know what, let's actually do that or you know what let's no we'll do that after um, we'll, we'll add some cool functionality so now for the bottom one, so if we press the down arrow key, if paddle offsets at three um, is greater than half paddle height, uh, decrement it. So now let's try uh, doing it. Holding down the arrow key. And I cannot go any further. If I keep going down. Cannot go any further. Okay, so the ball now looks fine. 
Huh, must have been something with the memory? I don't know. That's actually weird that it's using 42 megabytes of memory. This is a very light program. Or, you know, it's it's probably the GLW library. So that's fine. <sighs> Let me refill my water real quick. I think we're almost done with this soundtrack, unfortunately. But we are also almost done with everything I wanted to cover today, so I think we're all good. Alright, so now the offset that I wanted to figure out was just like how far from the top can it go, because it doesn't look too good if it can go all the way to the top, so we'll just create some offset there. And it'll simply be, we just add that to the boundary, so 600 minus Y is greater than half pedal height plus offset. Like that. God, I, I need to put this on the table. One second. You know, let me actually just draw this. You know, I'm going to rewrite all this real quick. I'm going to waste more of your time, don't worry. Alright, so screen height minus y is greater than. Um, half paddle height plus offset and the offset is some value so then y is less than um, screen height minus half paddle height plus offset just like that and then we'll set it similar for um, the bottom so we'll just say 0 plus y is greater than uh, half paddle height plus offset and we can actually just make a bound a, a variable called paddle boundary that'll just be half paddle height plus offset um, all right so at the top let's create this offset so um, const floats offset is equal to let's make it the ball radius uh, then const float paddle boundary um, is equal to half paddle height plus offset and I will comment what each of these values means in the uh, code so now in process input all we got to say is um, if so at the top if paddle offsets at one uh, is less than screen height minus paddle boundary uh, then if paddle offsets at one is greater than paddle boundary then the same thing for the bottom two. So now we should have some sort of boundary from the or separation from the top and the bottom. Yep, so there's a little bit of space there. I cannot go any further. I'm still holding the key down. Um, you guys can hear that, right? I haven't smacked the keyboard enough. Uh, yeah, so I probably took more time than I needed to, to be honest. Um, but you know, it's pretty cool. How about that? Okay. Um, so I, I really don't have anything else, to be honest. Um, the uh, next video, we'll be working on collisions and getting the ball to actually move. So physics and collisions. And that'll be at some point next week. Um, tomorrow is actually our uh, first year anniversary of the first video that I released. If I'm correct. Your videos. Sort by. Date added oldest. September 24th. That's tomorrow. 
so yeah it's been a good journey I'll talk about it tomorrow but you know um, anyway uh, hope you guys enjoyed learned something and we will get to the physics and collisions next week um, and then I think we I actually had a, a cool little so I think after that we can add some scoring um, but that'll probably be next video as well. Um, and then, um, and then, uh, a week after that, maybe we can do some networking, possibly make this game online or something. Um, just a, just a thought, because it wouldn't be too much data to send back and forth, so it'd be pretty interesting. Alright, um, anyway, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you're enjoying this, Yash people. Um, Anyway, I will uh, see you guys next week with, um, or no, actually, I'll see you guys tomorrow and then Friday or Saturday whenever I um, do another stream. So, yep, until then, adios. I'll see you guys uh, later. Thank you.